Okay. Hi, everybody. First of all, just say thank you so much to Andrea and to Daniel for inviting me along to speak to you this morning. It's really nice to be able to chat to you. My name is Tom Bowser from the RT Red Kite Project. And for the next 20 to 30 minutes, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my farm, RT, and some of the work that we're doing to try and enhance habitats for all sorts of species, in particular for dragonflies. So for those of you who don't know RT, we're a 1,400-acre sheep and beef farm located between Toon and Dunblane in central Scotland, about 20 minutes from Stirling and an hour from Glasgow and then The farm's been in my family now since 1916, so I'm the fifth generation to live here, and my daughter, Rowan, is the sixth. Some of you may have visited us before and will know us for the Arctic Red Kite Project, which is our main nature tourism project. In 1996, the RSPB began to reintroduce red kites to central Scotland as part of the UK-wide project to return these birds to our skies. Kites had been the most common bird of prey that you could find in all of Britain, but unfortunately, by the late 1800s in England and early 1900s in Scotland, these birds have been wiped out largely because of the growth of game shooting as an industry. So they had to be reintroduced to both countries. And luckily for us, our area was one of the areas picked. Kites, although they weren't released on our farm, came and started roosting and eventually nesting here. And we've got a whole host of them suddenly arriving. So we started feeding them and invited people to come along, see the birds, Hopefully, fall in love with them when we told them the story from their extirpation to reintroduction and beyond, hoping that by seeing them and appreciating them, it would make them more inclined to want to look after these birds, have less tolerance for those who still wish to harm them. So each day, we still feed them a small supplementary feed, enough to top up what they could find in the wild, but not so much that they would ever be the mainstay of their diet. And we invite people along to come and see them and learn about them. We also run red squirrel viewing hides here as well. In our area, we're on the boundary between grey squirrels further south and highland red squirrel population. And we do a lot of work monitoring both species. We started feeding red squirrels in the woods here in 2018. And again, we're trying to invite people to come along and see them, fall in love with them and try to do the bit to help them out in any way that they can. We have two aims for the estate. The first is to produce food and the other is to make our home a great home for nature. So in the last couple of years, we've sown three acres of wildflower meadow. We've got about a quarter of the place in woodland, all of which is linked up by these big, amazing hedgerow corridors. We do little bits of rewilding here, letting plates, bits of it just go. So as you can imagine, the gorse on the hill here in the summertime just smells and sounds incredible. A beautiful coconutty smell and the sound of breeding birds inside there is just incredible. This is a patch of the hill that some volunteers and I have been planting up. So a long row of trees are going to stretch right the way down from the woods just behind where I was standing taking this photograph this morning to the woods you can see on the far side an amazing line of Scots pine, oak, cherry and browns just going to link up those habitats, allow wildlife safe passage between the two areas and give them plenty of food. What of the dragonflies are here you say? Well, we have a lot of ponds on the estate. At last count, we were up to 13 big ponds with three mini ones as well, so 16 in total. And these ponds are a great home for all sorts of wildlife, in particular for dragonflies. This is our best dragonfly pond here. Over at the far side of that is an old dry stone dike just beneath the trees there which dragonflies love to go and sunbathe on on the sunny days in the summertime. It's long been one of my mum's favourite places to go and take pictures of them. You just go and sit by that wall on a sunny day 
in the afternoon is when the sun starts to hit it. That's when you get the dragonflies coming. An amazing spot for them in a really, really good pond. So we've had dragonflies here for a long, long time, doing really well. Um, but for me, this is something of a new love, something that I didn't really know very much about until very recently. I knew we had dragonflies here, but we always had. But beyond that, don't ask me any more details, and I'm absolutely stunned to tell you anything. But things only began to change for us a couple of years ago. So it was in the summer of 2018 when Rory Mackenzie Dodds, Curry the Goonies Water and Andrea very kindly agreed to come and run a dragonfly walk here. We'd started doing these wildlife events. But again, this was all a new world for me. I knew a lot about kites and a little bit about squirrels, but we knew we had all this wildlife on the estate, but we had no real expertise in being able to tell people anything about it. So we started getting in touch with the experts, basically going from the cap and hand and saying, we're really keen, we'd like to know more, really come do a bit of work with us. And thankfully, these amazing people agreed to. So we ran this dragonfly walk up that great pond, took people out, and Rory, Curry, and Andrea started telling us all the things about these amazing insects. And for me, that afternoon was one of those real light bulb moments where you suddenly realise that something's been there this whole time and you've never really noticed it or appreciated it in the way that you should. But I think it really took enthusiastic experts to unlock this for me. Rory came out with a great line which made so much sense to me. He was quoting Norman Moore and saying that dragonflies were the birders insect. And for a raptor fan like me, that really just made so much sense. All the things that these amazing insects were doing were the things that inspired it all. And even I saw raptors doing it. So they were flying fast, they were breeding, they were killing things. Just life in high speed all the time. Just amazing things. And suddenly I just realized that. And just so, yeah, if you like raptors, and of course you're going to like dragonflies. So at first in that walk, I used to I remember finding myself laughing and seeing. Rory jumping around like a giddy schoolboy pointing out all these amazing insects. But of course, about five, ten minutes in, it was me that was jumping around doing the exact same thing. It was such excitement. Curry and Andrea were experts at the real up close stuff, drawing your attention to the things that were happening at the edge of the pond that you were just missing. The dragonflies and damselflies emerging from the pond for the first time, bursting free from the exuvia. Just amazing things. And that unlocked something else in me as well. Less of the kind of running around, chasing things and seeing all that was going on and more of the getting down close and having a good gobble at the side of the pond and just seeing what was there. Brilliant stuff. And from that day forward, I became something of an enthusiastic amateur for dragonflies. I was so... Now, Rory had given a presentation about dragonflies prior to this walk on that dragonfly day that they so kindly ran. And in his talk, he spoke of a raised bed pond that they built down at the Wickham Fen Nature Reserve, a pond, a pond inside a, I suppose you'd call it a raised flower bed shell. So sleepers screwed together with a pond lying around it. Show this picture of it, and that just lit another spark for me. And I thought, wow, that looks quite interesting. I might want to be here. So, next to our visitor center, we have this patch of one which really wasn't doing very much. RT, I should say, because it's a big place and because we have a lot of diversifications, uh, we haven't had to farm every single inch of it. There have been areas that have been just been let go, left for wildlife, which is one of the really nice things is that we're not forced to farm it 100% all the time. There are areas we can leave. And it was in this area by the visitor centre where we had nothing except for brambles, nettles, and dockens that we started this new project. We had an amazing team of volunteers that we've just drunk, what railway slippers. 
And in the winter of 2019, a frankly horrible day of construction, we went to work trying to get it leveled off and get this, this raised bed pond put in. Working conditions weren't great. This clay mud, as soon as we started going over it and putting a digger in, etc., etc., that mud just turned into something akin to the song. Really wasn't very easy to keep the feet walking along there. Trying to get a pond level on a slope wasn't particularly easy either. But we stuck at it and we had this amazing team that kept coming back, kept on helping us with it. And eventually, we built this. And this has really become one of the mainstays of our now, this pond area. It's been fascinating to sit on the benches by it, especially during that lockdown period. But maybe there wasn't much else to do. We would just sit by it and we would just watch it slowly unfold. Each week now, my volunteer Sandra and I, Sandra's our pond dipping expert, we run these pond dipping sessions at the pond where we take people out. Before the kite feeding time, and we show them what bits of what's going on in here. And this pond's become a real thing to all sorts of things. Things we didn't expect, and things that we hoped for. So we've had toads bringing in there, we've had frogs, great home for newts, all sorts of insects from water boatmen, pond skaters, great diving beetles, all sorts of things have come in here. It's been fascinating. And finally, last summer, we started getting our dragonflies and damselflies feeding in there. So that has been really, really good. And it's really, as I say, it's all thanks to our amazing friends who ran that first dragonfly tour that really sparked their imagination and made us think about doing something like this. The other thing they inspired us to do was to try and see if we could run our own dragonfly and damselfly tours. Now, I should say that really... I'm still at the point of being an enthusiastic amateur. I'm really, really interested in these insects. But I'm learning all the time as I go along. And I was quite nervous about starting these tours. I spoke to Rory quite a lot about this. And said, you know, do you really think we can do this? I knew that for them, they were looking to pass the torch on to other people that run it now. Not be out all the time running these tours. They wanted other people to be stepping in and helping out. I didn't know if I knew enough, but Rory was so supportive and great. And he just said, your enthusiasm will carry it. And so we started doing these tours, and they've been so much fun. Taking people out to a pond beside the red kite high, so then we can do a big nature day, is what we call them. And we take people out, we do an hour by the pond, looking for dragonflies, damselflies, and anything else we can find. And then we go and watch the kites for the rest of the afternoon. And it's brilliant. It's great just to be out with people doing these things. Dragonflies sometimes surprise us. This is our stranger of us. Dragonfly took a real liking to him. Should say for the avoidance of doubt, that is his hand there, in case anyone's wondering. We see huge numbers of them breeding on the pond. This is actually on the raised bed pond. Fantastic to see them coming in and breeding in such big numbers there. We found things we didn't expect as well. So I don't know if any of you have seen one of these before, but we noticed this floating about. What on earth is that? And this leaf that you can see in the middle of your picture here had a little translucent head poking out from it. We did a little bit of research and it turned out that, that there was a China mark moth caterpillar. What they do, aquatic moths that feed on vegetation. That's what they are. But they can't swim, so they have to build themselves some kind of raft to get out to the pond plants. So they nibble a hole in two leaves, making a boat, and they go floating about out there. We saw that once on the raised bed pond. It was my mum that spotted it. And after that, on the dragonfly tours, we just kept on seeing more and more of them. So please keep your eyes peeled if you're out by a pond this summer because you're guaranteed to see them. And just amazing these things that you spot. But common things that you would miss if you just weren't out doing this, like guddling by a pond. Fantastic things to see. So, so far on our walks, we've recorded these four species of dragonfly. 
and five species of damselfly. In total, over the course of the years, we have had 12 species recorded here, but those are the ones that we've seen since we started doing these walks the last couple of summers, and we're always on the lookout for more. It's been great fun. So what's next for us on our dragonfly damselfly journey then? Well, we'll continue with the walks. We're starting them as soon as we start seeing the first damselflies emerging. We'll start advertising them again and we'll be heading out and we'll be really excited. More ponds. For us on RGT, there are these spaces that actually make more sense for so many reasons to return to nature rather than keep on trying and failing to farm them. But I think there might be a lesson in there for the farming industry generally. This pond, which is the newest of our ponds on our team, number 13 of the big ponds, number 16 in total, this was an area that was just impossible for us. You can possibly see at the back of the screen here, an old field drain used to come through this route making all the trees fall over in there because you couldn't get roots in there. Just flooded in from there and used to fill this corner of the field every year without fail and turn it into this kind of boggy, marshy, horrible area, which if livestock went in there, which was rare, the only thing they would come back with was a dose of fluke. Um, just a terrible area for us for trying to farm and never be able to improve it without massive work. So my dad had the idea, why don't we just get the digger out, dig it out and make another pond? eventually fence it off and just leave it be You're much better as a home for life out than ever trying to work on it. So that's what we did in the, the last lockdown, spring of last year, we set to work, dug it out, we put an island in the middle of here, so that then birds hopefully could nest there. No dragonflies or damselflies yet, but they'll come to a lovely south facing space where it'll be nice and warm and when it starts to green up again, I think we'll make it free to leave in there. We've already, though, had frogs spawn. We have a pair of pipe wagtails that go around in there, and all sorts of things like water boatmen, uh, pond skaters, and the insects you'd expect going in there. So it'll be great. So we'll be looking at more areas like that, seeing if there's other spaces that really aren't doing us any favours agriculturally, that we can do something a bit better for nature with. That'll be part of our next plans. We're also looking to see how we can improve the ponds that we have. We've been really fortunate recently that a couple of our regular visitors have been incredibly generous. They wanted to do something for wildlife on a bigger scale, but haven't been able to do it because their gardens are only so big. So they've been sending us donations to buy trees with, and we've been planting them all around the estate. Had a really positive result on that in that um, the amount of woodland we have here now is pushing our whole state to be carbon negative, which is really good. We've got our carbon scores back and they're massively in the black, which is great, really, really good. And we want to drive that score further and further down. So as well as the trees that I mentioned earlier that we've been planting up on the hill, the oaks, Scots pines, the rowans, cherries, We've been planting aspen all around our water courses here around the ponds and around the stream, which is going to make a great habitat for all sorts of insects and also for another feature which I'll mention later on. Here's round finishing planting the last tree at one of the ponds. We put in 300 aspen whips around the ponds now. So you can see why she was smiling so much when we got one and finished. It's been a big job. But what a difference they'll make in time to come. The things we've been doing can improve the water courses here. We are a really good space for frogs and toads and newts to be breeding. But unfortunately, every year, at that point when the weather starts to warm up, winter disappears and springs on the horizon, we get loads of them run over on the road. And it finally struck me a couple of years ago that really what we needed to do was try and help bank get them across the road. And I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner, but going out with my wife Sarah and a daughter down and we've been picking a bucket with them and as many people as we can, getting them over and into the ponds. And all of a sudden, those ponds are just alive. Massive orgies going on there every spring. Hundreds and hundreds of frogs and goats in there breeding the wind. And with toads, 
and frogs have come. What's for the predators? Keen to fill their boots. Herons, buzzards, even kites coming and picking them off. Suddenly there's a whole circle of life going on there and it's amazing to see. Our biggest next step for the waterways, which I think will back all these things more than anything that we could possibly do, is these guys here. So we are in the process of applying to have beavers translocated from complex sites where they've been killed in place of two Arcadi. It's never been done in Scotland before. There's a lot of opposition from various big organisations representing landowners against us, but we're quite confident that we'll be able to do it. Beavers are already only five kilometres away from here, so they're going to come from the River Teeth, where they currently are, up the Arctic Burn, which runs on the Arctic eventually. But we're keen to speed it up because in 2019, you know that a fifth of the known beaver population was killed under licence in Tayside. And we want to try and provide a better and more sustainable way forward for these animals, something that can benefit so much other wildlife in Scotland. So in the process of doing that, we're about to submit our official application, having finished all the consultations, and we hope to get a response sometime over the summer. And if we're successful, to be moving beavers here sometime in the autumn period. And we know that if we have beavers, this is going to benefit all sorts of things in particular insects like dragonflies. For those of you that haven't been to a beaver habitat before, they're just incredible. The statistics from Sterling University said that beavers would increase invertebrates by 26%, I think it was, and the plant life vegetation by 33%. Just incredible habitat engineers and those deadwood habitats they can make. Felling trees bring that deadwood down to the water's edge. Makes such available food for fish, for bats, and of course for things like dragonflies as well. Those insects suddenly brought to the water's edge will just bring a rise for so many things. So we really, really hope we can bring them here, that we can improve the ecosystem here further and that we can make a great home for these dragonflies. Folks, that's about all that I want to say this afternoon, this morning, I should say, so. But I'll look forward to joining you later on for the Q&A session where we can discuss a bit more. And if any of you would fancy joining us for some of the dragonfly walks, as I say, we'll be organising them as soon as we start seeing things coming out and they'll all be posted on social media so please do give us a follow on there and keep an eye out it'd be great if some of you would like to come along I'm as mentioned earlier still very much in the learning process and it's always really nice when we do get people that know a lot about dragonflies coming along far from being daunting it's actually great to have you along and learn a bit more share what we're finding it's a really nice afternoon so I hope you will join us but Thank you very much again for listening and thank you again to Andrea and Daniel for inviting me along. See you later on.